Welcome to our lecture online, and now let's take a look at the third type of sequence that we could run into when we try to determine whether or not the sequence converges or diverges. So in this case, the power in the numerator is going to be smaller than the power of the denominator. In that case, the sequence will always converge, and it will converge to the number zero. For example, here we have n squared divided by the square root of n to the fifth power. So we can simplify this to make it easier to look at, but this is equal to n squared divided by n to the 2.5 power. So you notice that 2 is smaller than 2.5. So as n increases, as n becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you then notice that the numerator will grow more slowly than the denominator as n increases, and in the limit, as n goes to infinity, number close to infinity squared is always going to be much, much smaller than a number close to infinity raised to the 2.5 power. That ratio becomes smaller, 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 and in the limit, as n goes to infinity, that ratio goes to zero. So in other words, we know that it converges and the number will be equal to zero in the end. Same over here, we have n plus 1 in the numerator, n squared plus n plus 1 in the denominator. And again, notice that n to the first power of the numerator, n squared in the denominator, we can ignore the n plus 1 over here. As n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this will grow much slower than the denominator. So again, the sequence will converge, and in the limit, it will become equal to zero. And finally, on this example here, notice if we take the largest component in the numerator, n to the fourth power, but it's the square root of that, and then we compare that n cubed in the denominator. If we ignore this portion right now and only concentrate on this, we realize that we have a ratio approximately equal to n squared divided by n cubed. The n cubed in the numerator will become less and less significant since we take the square root of that, and so it really comes down to this ratio. Since this exponent is smaller than this exponent right here, we can say that it will converge, and in the end, it will converge to the number zero. So, if we have the case where the exponent in the numerator is smaller than the exponent in the denominator, the sequence will always converge, and it will always converge to zero. And that's how it's done.